The congregation of Stanley New Hope Pentecostal Church, located on Farmview Road in Stanley, Virginia, welcomes you to join us for the next half hour of spirit-filled singing and preaching from the Word of God. Our vision is to be a church where our friends, family, associates, and neighbors can come and worship and be enthusiastically served in love regardless of their past or circumstances, but by love serve you one another. Galatians 5.13 Good evening again, friends, and welcome back to the outreach ministries of Stanley New Hope Pentecostal Church. What a delight it is to have you joining us this evening by way of television or by way of internet. Truly, it is an honor to have you with us. We look forward to this each week, coming to you by way of television, internet, and radio, sharing with you the love of Jesus Christ, and it's truly an honor and a blessing to know so many of you are watching, and uh, we thank you for tuning in this evening and I pray that over the past few weeks you've enjoyed the broadcast with our special guests uh, Todd and Ashley uh, Repass Shiflet. We enjoyed our time with them and prayerfully in the future you'll get to see some more of them on the broadcast. Well this evening I want to uh, make a few announcements to you if I may before we get into the word. The first thing I want to announce to you is in one week next Sunday evening February the 2nd Sunday evening February the 2nd at 6 o'clock we're going going to have here at New Hope Church a special guest speaker and that is Sister Wanda Myers and we love Sister Wanda here at New Hope and many of you uh, watched her I've played her in times past on the broadcast we've played her tapes and uh, her messages and you have enjoyed her well Sister Wanda is going to be here Sunday evening February the 2nd at 6 o'clock she's going to be ministering in song and she's going to be ministering in the word and you're not going to want to miss this service I promise you it's going to be a spirit filled service and I believe God's going to do some great and mighty things in this service with Sister Wanda now again that's next Sunday evening February the 2nd at 6 o'clock. Some of you here in the Page County area, you know Sister Wanda better as Sister Wanda Reed because she's a daughter to Brother Kinsey and Sister uh, Hazel Reed and she grew up here in Stanley, a native of Stanley in Page County and uh, many of you know her that way but uh, now her and her husband Larry pastor in the, at the Cool Springs Pentecostal Holiness Church in Bedford and they do a wonderful work there with the Lord's help and we're excited to have Sister Wanda. You're not going to want to miss this. One week, February the second six o'clock make plans to be here and hear this dynamic ministry now next I want to uh, tell you about something else special coming up two weeks from tonight Saturday February the 8th two weeks from tonight we're going to be having here our annual all-you-can-eat spaghetti dinner and many of you all come to this every year you know we've had this dinner every year since we've been on TV because this has always been one of the things we do throughout the year to help us raise funds to stay on the air you see as much as I wish this was free it's not free to come to you each week by way of television and internet it costs money and some of you are faithful to support us financially and uh, some of you I know are supporting us in your prayers and we appreciate that but this spaghetti Spaghetti dinner helps us to stay on the air. Well, I'd like to invite you to bring your family and come for our annual all-you-can-eat spaghetti dinner, February the 8th. It's going to be from 5 o'clock until 7 o'clock right here at the church. I would love to meet some of you in person. Uh, some of you I have met. Some of you I've never met. Love to meet you in person. The cost of the meal is very simple. For those 12 through adult, it's $7 in advance, $7.50 at the door. For those 4 to 11, it's $5 in advance, $5.50 at the door. And those three and under are absolutely free. And we would like to welcome you to join us. That's two weeks from tonight, February the 8th. We're going to have all you can eat spaghetti salad, garlic bread, desserts, coffee, tea, and water. You can eat in here in the church fellowship hall or you can get orders to go. There will be carry out available. But we welcome you to join us two weeks from tonight, February the 8th, from uh, 5 o'clock until 7 o'clock, all you can eat spaghetti, garlic bread, salad. Let's have a wonderful time of fellowship together. Now, one other thing, and then we'll get into the word this morning. I know this sounds like it's a long ways off, but it's hard to believe here it is already January the 25th, and and seems like just yesterday we was doing watch night service. So we're already throughout the month of January. I, I don't know where time's going, but it's, it's flying by. But I want you to start saving the dates for this year's singing 
in the valley. Our singing in the valley this year is going to be July the 18th through the 20th. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So far, we have already confirmed this year uh, Ernie Dawson and Airline. They're going to be here with us. Many of you love Brother Ernie. Uh, the Perry sisters are going to be here with us. The Easter family will be here with us. The Easter brothers will be here with us. And by popular request this year, Jeff and Sherry Easter will be here as well. Now, there'll be other groups at it soon, but I want you to start saving those dates, July the 18th through the 20th, the uh, sixth annual Singing in the Valley right here at New Hope Church. You're not going to want to miss this year's event. With that said, I want to actually this evening go back to the same message that I preached last week, and, and actually I had the same message uh, last week. I had the same message played two weeks in a row on purpose because I, I want it uh, to, for you to understand the importance of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to read some of the same scriptures we read in that message, but tonight I want to take that message a step further. I want to show you more why we, why we fully believe in what we believe in and why we believe in the importance of the Holy Ghost. We base that message beginning in Acts chapter 1, verse number 4, and I want to read that again tonight. It says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, you have heard of me. <clears throat> for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for your word. And God, I thank you for every person that's watching by way of television and internet tonight. And Father, I do ask you again humbly to hide your servant behind the cross. Father, I don't want to be seen. I want you to be seen. Father, I don't want to be heard. I want you to be heard. And God, as John the Baptist himself said, I must decrease that you may increase. Father, allow me to decrease Increase, allow the Holy Ghost and Jesus to increase. And Father, let this word fall on good ground tonight and may it bring forth much fruit for your glory and honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said, amen and amen. Well, I want to go back to the Holy Ghost. You know, last week we looked at the fact that the last words spoken by any person are important words. The last words that somebody speaks before they leave this world are words that are important, words that we take to our heart, words that we keep, words that we meditate upon, words that we try to fulfill. I was reminded even of the story. I had a dear friend of mine, Sister Gladys Wetzel. Gladys Wetzel was a wonderful saint of God and when I pastored my first church I often stayed in Gladys's home with her and her husband Charles and uh, they would they would I wasn't married at the time so uh, the church that I pastored was about an hour from where I lived and I spent many nights in the home of Sister Gladys and Brother Charles Wetzel and uh, they loved me and I loved them but I remember uh, now, uh, this April will be four years ago, I stood in Rockingham Memorial Hospital beside uh, the bed of Sister Gladys Wetzel who was getting ready to go home and be with the Lord. We knew it was some final time, uh, final days for her and my wife was pregnant at the time with our youngest daughter, Kristen. And I told Gladys that day, I said, Gladys, I'm gonna name my new baby. Uh, my prayer is, my, I want to name her Hope Nicole. That's what I wanted to name her. And Gladys looked up at me and she said, oh, Randy. She said, I hope you don't name that kid Hope. I'll never forget those words, the final words that she ever spoke to me. And once uh, Gladys went home to be with the Lord, just within the next 24 hours after saying that to me, I looked at my wife and I said, honey, we're going to pick a different name because I could not go against the final words that some saint of God who I loved and respected had spoken to me. And that's how we came up then with the name of Kristen Nicole instead of Hope Nicole. Final words are very important. And we looked at that last week and we looked at the fact that these were the final words Christ had before he ascended back to the Father. And, we, and the, these, in these final words, we looked at the fact he could have spoke about anything he chose to speak about. He could have spoke about Bible prophecy. He could have spoke about the second coming of the Lord. He could have spoke about healing. He could have spoke about miracles. He could have spoke about more commandments. He could have spoke about the law. He could have told us all about heaven. He could have told us all about hell. He could have spoken on any topic he desired 
but instead he commanded the disciples to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And understand something, I want to just reiterate this and I'm going to move on to something new tonight. Understand something tonight. He didn't just give the Holy Ghost as a suggestion, but in verse 4 the Bible says he commanded them. Understand Jesus commanded you and I that we should tarry and wait for and hunger for and thirst for and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Jesus commanded you and I to receive the Holy Ghost. Now, I want to go further tonight because we talked about the importance of the Holy Ghost last week. And I shared with you last week that I believe if you and I are going to experience a year of victory, if you and I are going to have the victory that Christ wants us to have, we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yet there's some people that still confused. I have some people say, Pastor, I'm saved, so I I have the Holy Ghost. Well, you're wrong. You're right and wrong. Really? Let me just explain this to you. When we become born again, we are indwelt with the Holy Ghost unto regeneration. In other words, the Apostle Paul said if we don't have the Spirit of Christ, that we're none of his. So the Holy Spirit begins to live in us unto regeneration at the conversion. At our conversion birth, when we become born again, we're indwelt with the Holy Ghost unto regeneration. However, we are are not yet baptized in the Holy Ghost. There is a difference in having the Spirit of God unto regeneration and being baptized in the Holy Ghost with the fullness thereof and the power thereof. You say this the tonight, preacher, you got some scripture to prove this to me? I certainly do. I knew some of you would ask that so the Lord allowed me to have some for you. We go to Acts chapter 2. Well, first of all, we can go back to Acts chapter 1. Jesus is talking to the disciples. Understand the disciples are saved. They believe in Jesus. They're, they're going to fulfill the work that he calls them to fulfill until he calls them out of here. They are born again. They believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and they know there's only one way to heaven and that'll be through Jesus Christ. They're saved, yet Jesus says, even though you're saved, you must wait right here until you have received power from on high and that power is the Holy Ghost. Understand, Christ is talking to Christians here. He's talking to to his own disciples. That's Acts chapter one. We go to Acts chapter two. We have this same group of people. Christ has already ascended back to the Father. And the Bible says in Acts chapter two, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were assembled together. They were in one place, one mind, one accord. They had their hearts and their eyes fixed on Jesus. They were anticipating the gift in which he had promised. And the Bible says there came a sound from heaven as as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the place. It filled the place in where they were were sitting and the Bible says they all begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. You see in Acts chapter 1 they had the Spirit unto regeneration. In Acts chapter 2 they were baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire as Christ told them they would need to be. Well preacher, that's one example. I need more proof. Well, you can go to Acts chapter 10. You can visit a man named Cornelius and you can look and see what took place at his house when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, some of which had already been saved and they had the Holy Ghost unto regeneration, but they had not yet been baptized in the Holy Ghost. One of my favorite accounts personally happens to come out of Acts chapter 19 when the apostle Paul was at the church at Ephesus and he looked at them at the church at Ephesus, understand he was talking to saved people. You read Acts 19, six, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed. They were saved. They were born again. They were Christians. And Paul said to them, have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost since you believed? And their response to Paul was, no. We've been baptized unto John's baptism, but we didn't even know for sure about this Holy Ghost baptism. In other words, they were saying, we didn't know if the time of the baptism of Holy Ghost had even came yet. And Paul, the Bible says, laid hands upon them and he prayed for them and the Bible teaches us that they were baptized in the Holy Ghost and they all spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Understand something, they had been saved 
but not baptized yet in the Holy Ghost. You see, we're in a time today where people don't want to hear about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We're in a time today, and I think I said this last week, but I'm going to say it again. It really disturbs my heart because we're in a time today, even when a lot of mainline Pentecostal denominations no longer welcome the Holy Ghost in their church. I was recently told, and if I, if I would call the name, uh, many people would know the name. I'll not do that tonight, but understand, I was told recently of a church who's in a mainline organization that was founded upon the Holy Ghost and fire, that was founded upon speaking in tongues, that was founded upon the gifts of the Spirit, and I was told of the pastor and his his assistant teaching in the church sanctuary that the Holy Ghost was not welcome, that tongues was not welcome, that you could not allow the manifestation of the Holy Ghost in the church. You know what I said to the person that told me that? You better run as fast as you could run. I would not go back in the doors of a church where they said the Holy Ghost is not welcome because I'm here to tell you something. I believe you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost when you say he's not welcome. I want you to know Jesus commanded you and I to receive the Holy Ghost. Jesus said we needed him to fulfill our mission here on earth and there's no man or woman that should be trying to change what Jesus Christ has already told us. We need the Holy Ghost and the baptism thereof. Now I believe this. I believe along with the Holy Ghost there's evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. You see, there's the evidence of receiving the Holy Ghost unto regeneration. That evidence is you become born again. You don't live like you used to live. You don't go to the places you used to go. You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't do the things you used to do because Paul said when we're born again, he said all old things pass away. Behold, all things become brand new. There's an evidence that you become born. Listen, my friend, let me just tell you something tonight. I'm not even on my notes right right now, but you need to hear this. Somebody needs to know. If you have to continually tell someone that you're saved or you're a Christian, then probably you need to do a real checkup from the heart up because there's probably an issue in your life. We shouldn't have to tell people that we serve Jesus Christ. We shouldn't have to tell people that we're a Christian. People should see Jesus in us by our actions, by the way we live, by the things that we do. The gift of Christ should be manifesting through us and they should know that we're different because of who we are and how we live. I believe that. Anyway, just as there's an evidence of the new birth, there's an evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. You see, church, if you'll read throughout the book of Acts, you will find that in the book of Acts that the evidence of speaking in tongues is taught to each one of us in the book of Acts. The book of Acts teaches us that with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there is the evidence of speaking in tongues. The speaking in tongues is the outward sign of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to upset some of you tonight, and that's okay. I get good at that. Me and my big mouth, as Brother John Centers preached one time right here at New Hope Church. Let me say this to you tonight. If you've never spoken in tongues you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to say that again. If you've never spoken tongues, you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost according to the book of Acts. Because with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there is always the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues. Now understand something, and, and I, I, I need to get you to really understand this tonight. I believe that there's three types of tongues. I believe, well actually there's four types of tongues. Three are of the spirit and one's of the flesh. You figure that out. I'm going to talk about the three of the spirit. But there's three types of tongues. The first tongue is the evidence tongue. The tongue that when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have the evidence by speaking in new tongues. That's tongue number one. Then the second tongue of the Holy Ghost is your prayer language. You know, when you get in your prayer closet and you begin to pray before God, and the book of Romans chapter 8 says even when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Ghost will make groanings through us, and we begin to pray in the Spirit, and we, we have the gift of our prayer language, the gift of tongues as our prayer language. That's number two. No one may ever hear that gift, your gift, your prayer language, your prayer gift. No one other than you and Jesus may never, ever hear that. 
That may just be between you and Jesus from now until he comes. That's tongue two. But then there's tongue three. We find that in 1 Corinthians 12 where the apostle Paul said some would receive the gift of tongues whereby, in other words, they would give a message in tongues even in a corporate setting, in a church worship service, if you will. But he said when you use that gift of tongues, which is the third one, he said there must be an interpreter present to interpret tongues. Now listen, I want you to understand something. If you are speaking out in a corporate setting, then there should be an interpreter. And Paul said if there's not an interpreter, you're to remain silent. I'm not talking about a bunch of chaos. God's not the author of confusion. But understand there is the gift of tongues where somebody will give a message and somebody will interpret that message. But now let me get back to the evidence tongue because I believe that the evidence of speaking in tongues is so closely linked to the baptism of the Holy Ghost that the evidence of speaking in tongues should always be the normal evidence of the baptism. And I also believe that when tongues as a confirming sign of the Holy Ghost has been denied or lost from view that the truth and the experience of Pentecost is distorted or entirely lost. Let me say that again. I believe that when tongues as a confirming sign of the baptism of the Holy Ghost has been denied or lost from view that the truth and the experience of Pentecost is lost or distorted entirely forever and ever. We must realize there is the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Now, why did Jesus say that you and I need the Holy Ghost? Well, we looked at the fact these are his last words before his ascension, so it's important that we listen. We've looked at the fact that when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there is evidence, but why? Why do we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost? You know, my daughter, my youngest is three. She'll be four this year. And, and she, and even her and my 10-year-old, well, my 17-year-old too, just all kids in general, they go through that stage of why. You know, every time you tell them something, it's why. Why do I have to do that? Why do I have to go there? Why do I have to wear this? Why, why, why? Well, we ask the question even as adults, Lord, why do I need the Holy Ghost? Why do I need to speak in tongues? Why do I need to believe in the fullness of the Spirit of God? Well, let me show you why. You see, the baptism of the Holy Ghost brings to you and I boldness and power to accomplish the mighty works of God. Now, I want you to understand something. I believe in speaking in tongues. We just went through that. And when I make the statement I'm about to, to make, I am in no way trying to lower or demean or diminish speaking in tongues. I believe in speaking in tongues. I thank God for my prayer language of tongues. I thank God for the gift of tongues. But understand something, especially those listening tonight that are Pentecostal, that believe in, in the Holy Ghost in tongues. Listen to me. There is more to the baptism of the Holy Ghost than speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is an evidence, yes. Speaking in tongues gives us our prayer language, yes. But understand something. Jesus didn't want us to be empowered with the Holy Ghost just so we could be tongue talkers. He empowered us with the Holy Ghost that we would have power first and foremost to be his witness. Do you see the number one thing you and I are called to do as Christians is to be a witness, is to win the lost, to make disciples, to lead people to the Lord. I don't understand. Many times people will call and say, Pastor, I need you to go pray for so-and-so. They're lost and they're dying. Maybe you can lead them to the Lord. Well, my thoughts are this. You're supposed to be filled with the Spirit. What's wrong with you going? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mind. I'll go pray for anybody that I can possibly go pray for. But the point I'm trying to make is if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have the same power that I have. You have the same authority I have. What's wrong with your testimony? Why can't you go? Well, I, I could give you some answers into why I believe that, but that'll be for another message. The Holy Ghost is to empower us to be a witness. The Holy Ghost is to empower us that we can uh, perform through the power of the Holy Ghost miracles, that we can lay hands on the sick and that they will recover. The Holy Ghost empowers us to do great and mighty works for Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost empowers you and I to have prophetic utterances. You find it in the book of Acts. The Holy Ghost empowers you and I to have an in, in enhanced, enhanced sensitivity to sin. I'm sorry, I can't talk tonight. An enhanced sensitivity to sin. You know, if there was ever a time that the world needed 
a greater sensitivity to sin, my friend, is today. But let me just get away from the world a minute. Let me put it this way. If there was ever a time that the church needed a greater sensitivity to sin, it's today. I see so much garbage taking place in the church under the banner of Jesus Christ that it makes me sick. And I think to myself, God, if it sickens me this much, how much more does it sicken you? We live in a world where people think they can do anything they want to do, live any way they want to live, and they still going to go to heaven. They think just because they're a good person, they will on their way. Can I tell you something tonight, my friend? I hate to bust your bubble, but I'm going to fill you in with something. Hell is full of good people. Let me say that again. Hell is full of good people. The Bible says that no man is saved by works, lest any man should boast. But we're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. We're saved by a set-apart, sanctified lifestyle that's well-pleasing to Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost will enable you and I to have a greater, enhanced sensitivity to sin. He will convict our hearts. I know one thing. There's people that have come in New Hope Church and they've left New Hope Church because they do not like the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. But I don't have time tonight to back down. I don't have time to turn around. I don't have time to tiptoe through the tulips. I don't have time to pussyfoot around with a bunch of tender bunnies that don't want to hear the truth. Jesus said preach the truth. Preach the gospel. Preach the word. It'll reprove. It'll rebuke. It'll exhort. And the Holy Ghost will enhance our sensitivity to sin and we need more of the Holy Ghost and fire in our lives that we would have more enhanced sensitivity to sin. Now for those that haven't turned the channel, let me show you something else. The Holy Ghost will give us a greater desire to seek righteous living. I said the Holy Ghost will give us a greater desire to seek righteous living. We need to be seeking righteous living, my friend. The Holy Ghost will allow you and I to live a life that will bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost will allow you and I to have new visions. The Holy Ghost will allow you and I to have manifestations of all of those wonderful gifts Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians 12. The Holy Ghost will enable you and I to love and understand the word of God. Many people say, say, Pastor, I'd read the word of God more if I could understand it. Can I tell you something? If you would allow the Holy Ghost to baptize you, you would understand the word of God. The Holy Ghost will give you and I a greater desire to pray and seek the face of God. And if there was ever a time we needed to be praying, my friend, that time is today. You and I need to be praying. We need to be seeking the face of God. The Bible says, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Friend, we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We need the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. Now next week, I want you to tune in because next week I'm going to share with you through the scripture how you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You'll not want to miss next Saturday night's message, how to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And with that said, let me remind you, next Sunday evening, February the 2nd, 6 o'clock, Sister Wanda Myers will be right here. You will be blessed. You're not going to want to miss the ministry of Sister Wanda Myers. 6 o'clock, February the 2nd, right here. Two weeks from tonight, February the 8th, 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock, all you can eat spaghetti dinner. Be here. Support this great cause. It helps us to stay on the air. It helps us to bring the gospel to you. If you've not already wrote to us yet this year, I ask you to take some time right now. Sit down, write to us, and if the Lord should lay it on your heart to make a contribution to help us stay on the air. We ask you to do it. You see the address on the screen, P.O. Box 259, Stanley, Virginia, 22851. Until this same time next week, we're praying for you and we ask that you pray for us. Good night and may God bless you. We are located on Farmview Road in Stanley, Virginia. You may send your prayer request to Pastor Randy Miller, care of Stanley New Hope Pentecostal Church, P.O. Box 259, Stanley, Virginia, 22851. Or you may call 540-778-2432. You may also email the pastor at pastorrandymiller at yahoo.com.